Alright man, welcome back to another Her Nature Reaction. Uh, today we got the insane experiment that broke a dolphin's heart, man. We're not going to waste any time and just get right into this one, baby. This video was sponsored by absolutely no one. Because nice. no one in their right mind would sponsor this. Okay. <laughs> well, butterfly on a corn cob. What do you mean by that? And he says, the wild... That was a po poor choice of words. God damn it. <laughs> Yo, what the fuck is the this? The same way Margaret Howe did when she took off that dolphin in the 1960s. Both she and I assaulted a captive creature, then expected it to be reciprocal. Well, Jupity Boop, <coughs> time to die. You know, we've done some really questionable Jesus things Christ, in the name man. of science. Like that time legitimate attempts at a human Z were made. Or that human time a psychologist Z? raised what? a chimp and a human baby together to see what would happen. We're gonna get back to that, but the answer is nothing good. And of course, that time we gave dolphins acid and hand service all for a very questionable science project. You see, the 60s were a special time. America and the very Soviet special. Union were in the midst of a meat measuring contest all the way up into space. And at the same time, there was a question as to whether humans could learn to communicate with animals as well as we do with each other. And renowned neuroscientist John C. Lilly fully took on the task of trying to bridge the gap between the man and animal language barrier. Now I nice. mentioned his job to show he wasn't just some acid dropping self stereotype of the <coughs> 60s. Don't get me wrong, he was, but he was also a contributing member of the scientific community. Ah. In fact, he was the one who invented Wait, what? He invented the deprivation tank? You're wrong. He was. No he was shot. Also a contributing member of the scientific community. In fact, he was the one who invented sensory deprivation tanks, which he did acid in. Anyway, he was interested in possible human <laughs> animal communication, but <laughs> which he did acid community. in. In fact, Just he so was you know. the one who invented sensory deprivation tanks, which he did acid in. Anyway, he was interested in possible human animal communication, but also in animal intelligence. And that's how dolphins got an invite to this party. At the time, John Lilly saw them as the smartest things on the planet that weren't human. And as a neuroscientist, he was especially drawn to the dolphin's brain. Not only do cetaceans have the largest Wait, brain- what? In a rhino's brain for some reason? Yeah, why is there- Damn, why is there- They kinda similar low-key, huh? ...of any animal, bottlenose dolphins have a brain four to five times larger than what you would expect for an animal their size. But what really made Lily Eureka himself was while he was observing and researching dolphins and talking to himself, he realized that the dolphins seemed like they were imitating his voice. And that convinced him that the dolphins were trying to speak to him. And with their high intelligence, Damn. John C. Lilly figured that if we could somehow find a way to communicate with dolphins, that could lead to us finding a way to talk to aliens. Which was an Olympic gymnast level stretch, but hindsight's 2020, and unfortunately, this was the 1960s. Either True. way, depending on how you look at it, this was both the best and worst thing that ever happened to his career. The implication of extraterrestrial communication convinced NASA and other government agencies to sponsor <laughs> Lilly financially. With the help of anthropologist Gregory Bateson, John C. Lilly would create the Dolphin House, where he would attempt to learn how to speak to dolphins. That's how the experiment started, but you don't want to hear about that. You want to get to the part where we started slipping dolphins acid. Oh, trust yeah, me, we're going to yeah, get to that. Just I do bear with me. Get there. The Dolphin House was built in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and you're going to see why that was actually very ironic. It's like having a gay friend on Yo, where's the Virgin Islands? I feel like I definitely should not look this up, at least on the camera. U.S. Virgin Islands are a group. The U.S. Virgin Islands are a group of Caribbean islands and islets. A U.S. territory is known for white sand beaches, reefs, and verdant hills. Okay, but where... Is it at uh, Google Maps? Here we go. Damn, it's up. It's like b right by Puerto Rico. Look at this shit. It's literally right by Puerto Rico, bro. You gotta zoom way the fuck in. God damn. Dick Street. That's not a joke, by the way. When I went to college, there was a gay fraternity located on D.I.X. Dick Street. 
That is a true story. So in this experiment, there were three dolphins. There was Sissy, the big sister and leader of the group, Pam, the shy introvert, and a young immature male named Peter. And again, given the circumstances, that name would be so ironic you'd swear it was part of a sick joke. But there was another key character to this story. And that was a Miss Margaret Howe Lovett. Margaret never had any formal scientific- Oh my god, I think I've seen this. If I'm right, this bitch literally jerks off one of these dolphins to try to get it to obey her train, commands. But apparently she was a natural at observing Spoiler, and documenting animal way. behavior. <laughs> so they brought her in and had her work with the one male dolphin, Peter, since he was the only one out of the three that never had any human sound training. So Margaret's goal would be to teach Peter how to speak English the same way a mother would to her child. Bruh. She would slowly count to three and have Peter repeat after her. She'd say all the vowels in the alphabet and try to get Peter to mimic her. And on some level, this made sense since mimicry is how. Okay, that was the most terrifying clip I've ever seen all the in my life. In the I alphabet and, and I'm to watching get Peter it again. One, two, three. You can do better, Peter. And on some Bro, level, this made fucked. sense since mimicry is how baby dolphins learn how to dolphin from their mothers. But here's the thing with dolphins. In the wild, they communicate with each other through a series of clicks, squeaks, and whistles, and most of that's in the water. But to talk to humans through air, the dolphins would have to make noises through their blowholes. It's like if I challenge you to speak perfect English, but without using your mouth. So for anatomical reasons, Peter was pretty much screwed. Figuratively, the, the literal is coming. Like Peter. I'll say one thing though, say what you want about Margaret, but she was committed. She painted her face white and her lips black so Peter could see the shape and movement of her mouth while Yo, she was making okay. the noises so he could try to replicate that with his blowhole. She also decided to move in what with Peter full time fuck? to maximize her time with him. And slowly, Peter was actually getting better at mimicking her. This is a morning lesson with Peter. Which made Bruh, John C. Little Eureka creepy. himself for the second time. News about this Dolphin English project got out and people were curious and John C. Lilly was seen as a visionary. It even got the attention of world-renowned astronomer Carl Frickin Sagan. The Frickin is silent. Now I'd like to point out that at this point this was a several that. thousand if not million dollar NASA funded experiment. Like people's careers NASA and funded? reputations were hanging on this. What? Yeah, Frickin is silent. Now I'd like to point out that at this point this was a several thousand Are if not million me? dollar NASA funded experiment. Like, people's careers and reputations were hanging on this. Yet nobody stopped to think that it might be physically impossible for dolphins to produce the sounds needed to speak English. Especially from an really? air anus on its head. And you keep in say. mind, John C. Lilly was a neuroscientist. One of the professions you pray your siblings or cousins never get because then your parents will never let you forget it. And apparently, there was some disconnect. Gregory Bateson was like, why are we teaching them English when we should be learning how they speak to each other? He even had the idea of putting two dolphins in two tanks where they couldn't see each other, but could communicate through sound. That way we could study the sound and figure out dolphin language. Lily's response okay, was, that's... nah, we teach them English. You know, naked mole rats spend their entire lives using their teeth as shovels underground, and even they have less tunnel vision. And ironically, they might have actually had better luck if they used an animal like a raven or a parrot or even a seal. You know, animals that are actually capable of mimicking human speech. But I guess dolphins were the hill to die on. So Bro, this is fucking terrifying. So Margaret and Peter kept on with the lesson. Let's just, from now on, not try to teach no animals English. But soon there would be another I think we can all agree Peter on that. was a young, sexually immature male with the attention span of one. So how do you get a hormonal teenager uh, going here we go. to listen to you? Yep, we finally made it to that part. So yep. whenever Peter would get distracted, Margaret would send him downstairs to play with Pam and Sissy. But dolphins can mate several times a day, if not an hour, and the constant <coughs> disruptions were starting to slow their progress down. So Margaret figured she could kill two birds with one stroke. Stone. Stroke. Two things stroke. happened after that. Peter Jesus got a job Christ. he never applied for. And after that, the only virgin on the premises was the very island itself. Playing tug of war with little Peter meant Margaret had more time to teach big Peter English. And as a species that often uses decapitated fish, I'm sure Peter wasn't complaining. So now Margaret had a full-time job teaching Peter English while also learning anatomy and chemistry part-time. Oh but my patience was starting to run thin because there was another thing a group of scientists somehow Bro. never thought of. 
you could teach a dolphin how to speak English, but that doesn't mean he'll understand any of it because mimicry isn't comprehension. Any pretentious dude in the bar can say E equals MC square, ask him what it actually means, and watch how fast his face falls. Yes, what started as an experiment true. to learn to communicate with a highly intelligent non-human creature quickly devolved into an R-rated game of Simon Says. Except with more hand service and drugs. Oh and now we're at that part of the story. God. You see, at this point, John Lilly was under a lot of pressure. Unlike Peter, financial backers had started to pull out. And Gregory Bateson, who was already skeptical <laughs> okay. to begin with, was now starting <laughs> Yo, that one almost went over my head. Oh my god, that was great. Into an oh, that was game really Simon that says. <laughs> Except with more hand service and drugs. And now we're at that part of the story. You see, at this point, John Lilly was under a lot of pressure. Unlike Peter, financial backers had started to pull out. And yeah. Gregory Bateson, who was already skeptical to begin with, was now starting to seriously wonder just how far they were willing to go for science. Soon, he'd get his answer, just not the one he wanted. Oh, like I said, fuck, the 60s man. were a different time. And around this time, a fun little thing known as lysergic acid diethylamide was quickly gaining traction as a potentially oh, mind shit, I completely forgot about this. substance. John Lilly would be even did this part. in the consumption of a little slice of delight, which he would take while in the sensory deprivation tank. It's not like he was a stranger to such activity. John Lilly wrote his first book, Man and Dolphin, over the course of one weekend while off amphetamines. So when he hit a roadblock in his research, Lilly was desperate, and his Hail Mary, let's give dolphins LSD and see what meth. happens. Margaret wasn't having any of that and demanded that he keep that nonsense away from <coughs> Peter, but at the time, Margaret was basically a 24-year-old intern, and John C. Lilly was still the big-time scientist. Very and like true. I said, hindsight's 2020, and logic had real estate in his blind spot. So nice. John took Peter along with Pam and Sissy on a lovely Saturday drive and recorded what happened. And apparently, nothing. Dolphins might have been slightly noisier, but pretty much nothing to record. Lily was beyond down bad, and he was desperate for a response, and he knew that dolphins have an incredible sense of hearing. So he got out a jackhammer. Because at this point, I don't think this was even about dolphins anymore. I think he just wanted to do acid. And this was a 60s, it's not like you needed an excuse for that kind of thing. So John Lily oh, pulled out a jackhammer fuck? and just started jacking away, an activity I'm sure that room had seen more than enough of. And the noise didn't seem to do anything, but probably ruined whatever trip the dolphins were on. At this point, Gregory Bateson had seen more than enough. Remember how I said he started to wonder how far they were willing to go? Well, apparently his line in the sand was giving dolphins a little sense of direction. If the experiment was a train and science was the tracks, at this point this thing was halfway down the Pacific, so he packed up and left. It was kind of wraps for the entire experiment after that. At one point, Lily tried communicating with the dolphins telepathically, so safe to say the acid had won. And as the experiment was called off and his staff separated, the dolphins were shipped out. So here's where a lot of the facts got left out for the sake of the story. So it's popular belief that after the experiment ended and Peter was separated from Margaret, he proceeded to die of a broken heart and from horny. Now, part of that is probably true. Let's just put it this way. Peter had gotten used to getting a special job every day, and he went from that to being painfully unemployed. Forget unemployed, bro was in a recession. And there's the fact that Peter very likely caught feelings for this woman that he had been around 24-7. But here's the part people leave out. Peter was shipped out to oh a former bank building in Miami God, to live. Bro. His new home was a tight, cramped tank that he could barely turn around it with little, if any, natural light. Also, think of how bad public bathrooms smell, and then imagine an animal that uses the bathroom five times more than any human. So yeah, Peter got effed over, only this time it was completely figurative. Another fact about dolphins is they aren't involuntary yeah, breathers like us. Every breath they take is a conscious choice. That's fucked it's up, why dolphins dude. can only sleep by resting half their brain at a time. Otherwise, they would just not breathe and flatline themselves. We know this because when John Lilly operated on dolphins to observe their brain and put them under anesthesia, the dolphins ended up suffocating. So dude, this is probably the most fucked up picture I think I've ever seen. Like, what the f- They just got this dolphin in this- He can't even move around. Like, this is so fucked, man. John Lilly what operated on dolphins science? to observe Holy their brain shit. and put them under anesthesia, the dolphins ended up suffocating. So Peter made the executive decision to delete himself, likely due to depression. Margaret didn't do much better. Because when Hustler Magazine found out about her and Peter and what she did to Peter, they wrote a story on her. And let's just say it Yo! Also, did I mention she never got paid for this? Like, imagine your entire legacy, like what you're going to leave on this earth was that you had relations with a wild animal and didn't even get paid for it. Bro, so I guess what both the she fuck? And Peter got screwed. Peter's death wasn't even the last time something like this would happen. Kathy was a dolphin who played flipper, and once the show ended and she was moved to an isolated pen, she too would proceed to cross her name off the census. Maybe it's a good thing we never learned how to talk to dolphins, because I imagine they wouldn't have much positive to say. They'd yeah, probably no call shit. John Lilly their Hitler. Speaking of him, he continued to experiment. But when a light seasoning of dope became illegal, he started doing ketamine. And like I said, we've done some sick things for science. Like when psychologist Winthrop Kellogg decided to raise his human baby son alongside a female chip named Guada. See yeah, what would happen. What happened was his human He talked about this a little bit. This shit is fucked, man. Baby son alongside a female chip named Guada. See what would happen. 
What happened was his human son started acting feral, walking on all fours, grunting like Gua, and even biting people. When the experiment ended and they sent off the female chimp that they had raised as a daughter to be used in more experiments, Gua would flatline to pneumonia a couple months later, and the boy she was raised with, Donald, would grow up to be a psychiatrist, until he would also delete himself at the age of 43. So I guess the theme of this video is sometimes science goes way too far. And as groundbreaking as it was, it somehow wouldn't be the last time someone publicly had relations with a dolphin. Like, Wait, this man had what? an entire relationship with a dolphin named Dolly that he claimed seduced him. Only difference was, they went way past hand. Wait, what the fuck? Dude, how come this looks like the type of guy to do As that it was, too? it somehow wouldn't be the last time someone publicly had relations with a dolphin. Like, this man had an entire relationship with a dolphin named Dolly that he claims seduced him. Seduced Only difference him. was, yeah, they went way past him. And to my knowledge, yeah. no substances were involved. Now, in fairness to him, he did have to deal with some pretty heavy trauma as a kid. Namely, when he was violated by a psychiatrist at the age of five, according to a podcast he was on that Yo, I watched. Yo, what Speaking the, of which, the fuck? Like the Dude, he always just throws in these huge things that are just like, he's just like, oh yeah, and this happened, bah, and it's just like, oh my god, fucking hit me with a sledgehammer, bro. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that might have... That, deal with some pretty heavy that might have had kid. something Namely, to do with it. Namely, he was violated by maybe. a psychiatrist at the age of five, according to a podcast he was on that I watched. Speaking of which, like the video. Like the video, I watched it and that was not pleasant. And I get that different people cope in different ways, it but did it really have to involve backdooring a dolphin? Like, how would you even like, like, like logistically, how would you even get the pieces? To, you, you know, we're not even going down that rabbit hole. Please don't, bro. Cause he might try to go in there too. Now, Lily's experiment oh was famous for all the wrong reasons, but it did God. have some positive what? effects. A lot of what we understand about the intelligence <laughs> of dolphins and. Yo, what the. Fuck. We're not even going down that rabbit He's hole. He's just stacking them. Cause he might try to go in there too. Now Lily's experiment was famous for all the wrong reasons, Fuck, but it did have some positive effects. A lot of what we understand about the intelligence of dolphins and cetaceans in general came from his work and it really helped shift the public perception of them. That shift is likely what led to the Marine Mammal Protection Act of 1972. Nice. Lily would also go on to campaign against the use of dolphins in captivity. Which was pretty admirable, but at the same time, like, bro, you gave dolphins ass and you get no more talk time after that. However, a lot of people see this project yeah, as a true. massive waste of time and resources. I disagree. The point of the experiment was to see if dolphins could learn to speak English, and now thanks to him, we know they can't. Because Drunk History said it best. You wouldn't just kidnap a Japanese man and keep him from his family and give him hand service that he didn't ask for and a little surprise dose that he definitely didn't ask for and suddenly expect him to start belting out fluent English. But that's going to do it for this video. For more consistent oh ask for and suddenly expect him to start belting out What is this? What movie is this? Yo, what fucking didn't movie ask for is this, bro? A little surprise dose that he definitely didn't ask for and suddenly expect him to start belting out fluent English. I know but that's going to do it for this video. Now. For more consistent content, be sure to follow my Instagram and TikTok. I try to post daily on both. And if you would like to further support this channel, my Patreon's also going to be in the description. Because let's be real, ain't no way YouTube going to let me monetize this. Either way, drink water, hug your mother, don't hug a dolphin, because apparently it could lead to more than you're equipped to deal with. And I'll see you in the next one. God damn, man. What a fucking banger like always. God damn. I'm kind of tired, Loki. Yo, hey, make sure to go subscribe to uh, Casual Geographic, yeah?